So this is a quick overview of how to use App Inventor for your project. So first, if you don't know where the link is to App Inventor, if you go to the class website and go to page three, you'll see that there's a link to the App Inventor site, beta appinventormit.edu. You also see there's a link to um, some general free WAV files if you need sound files for your project, and there's a link to um, some App Inventor tutorials if you want to do certain functions like the accelerometer and things that we aren't covering in class and you want to try it on your own. And if you want to try real coding, here's a link to Khan Academy, which I think has the best coding um, self-learning site uh, of all the ones out there. And the link to, to these lesson and videos. At the very bottom are, is, is where you download the training graphics that we'll use for the class example in class. So this is the bottom of page three. So let's do the class example. So when I log into beta appeventor.mit.edu, so um, if you don't have a blank screen here, uh, you can click add a screen just so you can, um, up here you can add a screen to have a blank screen. Or you can create a new project. These are all still practice. Um, when you do yours for your real project, you can clear all this out. And let's start. So we're going to add three buttons. And where our buttons are what become our images. And I'll close that. And these buttons are, let's, first one, let's, uh, we're going to, do you see I can upload right here? And I'm, I'm, I want to upload the menu button. Let's see, where is it? Screen menu, there it is. I'm going to click OK. And then I, under button two, and I can either click on button two or do you see under components here in the middle, I can just click over and toggle over here. And then I'm going to, under images, upload, sc sample screen. And you see it's right there. So you see how I'm just putting one below another. And then either I click on button three or I click over here. And I'm going to click and load this as sample screen two. So now I have my screen one, which is my menu, and then really, or then screen one and then screen two. Now do you see there's this little ugly text in the middle of each of these pictures? So I'm gonna go back to each button and then text color go none. And I click on button two, text color none. And button three, text color none. Next, what I need to do is I'm gonna leave button one Oh, so let me step back. The next thing I want to do is I want to name these buttons after what these pictures are because otherwise when I go to block editor later it's going to be really confusing if I have many buttons. So I'm going to click on button one and rename this menu button. And I know it's really a picture but I'm going to still call it a button because that's what the function is. And the button two if I go down here that's screen I'll just call this screen one button. You And you can really name these whatever you want. And then button three, I'm just name this screen two button. And once again, name it whatever you want as long as you, you name it something that you can find. Okay. So menu button is the one that needs to show up first. The other two, I actually need to hide it. So I'm going to click on screen button one. I'm going to go visible, hidden. I'm going to click on screen button two, visible, hidden. And I'm going to do that. So if I had multiple screens, remember, so you guys might have anywhere from six to eight screens. So I leave the first one. Shh, I'll leave the first one open, and I'm going to all the other ones. I'm going to hide, and this way, when you see now, the only one showing, showing is the main one. Once you've done that, then I'm going to load any sounds I need, and this is and I load all the sounds I need. So let's say if I have three sound files, I'm going to load one. And you see, I drop it actually on the picture itself. So I'm loading three, and they show up down here. And then I'm going to upload the sounds. So I click Upload. And in this case, I think I already uploaded it. So I have here, sound one. And then I'm going to upload it. And in this case, I already uploaded it. Uh, my sound two. And in this case, I'll upload it and have my sound three. Okay. And once again here, it's again, it's good practice to rename the sound. So I'll call this, oops, sorry about that. And I'll call this whoop sound and I'll call this completed sound and always make sure you're doing the sound file not the player because the player won't work for this task 
then rename this one as goodbye sound. You notice that, remember, no spaces between any of these. So now I have my sound files that are down here. And now I'm ready for block editors. So like open block editor, and I might save that file down here, say let it keep or let it save, and then execute it by clicking on it. If it asks you to run, click run. If it asks you to allow, click allow. And sometimes it takes a moment because this is loading a separate program. There you go. See? So, like I said, it takes a moment for this to load. And then here, I guess, uh, do you notice I have three kinds of um, drawers here? I have advanced, my blocks, which we've been working with yesterday, and then built in. And we're going to be using built in logic today as well as my block. But let's start with my blocks. So I'm going to go to my menu button, and I'm going to drag when menu button is clicked. And do you notice that? It's titled after what I I renamed it, this way I can find it easily. So when menu button is clicked, I'm going to look for a blue one down here called set menu button visible. So right now the menu button is visible, it means that you can you can see it, and I want to hide it. So I'm going to go over to built in, go to logic, and we're going to take the true, or actually I could have taken the false, and I'm going to click this over to false. So what this is saying is when I click on the menu button, the first screen, the first screen is going to disappear, and I want the second screen to appear. So I'm going to go back to my blocks, look for screen button, look for the blue one, and I go like screen button visible, the one with the little puzzle insert, and then, and I want to, then what I can do is I can click on this little trick, I can control C copy, the control V paste, and I can paste it over here. And it says, I actually want this now to be true. True and false are, are computer programming terms. False means off, true means on. So again, false means off, true is on. So when I click on menu button, the first screen, I'm going to turn it off, false. And I'm going to have the, the next screen on. So it's going to turn it on. And I want a sound to play too. So I'm going to, here, I'm going to go here, my blocks, whoop sound, and play whoop sound. Okay. And then now I'm, visit, I'm on my second menu. Uh, I'm on my second screen. So now I could go to my screen one, which is my second screen. So screen one. I'm going to take the screen one button click and watch this. I'm going to take this, control C, control V, drag it. I so said control C, copy, control V, paste. Sorry about that. It's my resolution. And then uh, screen one button visible. I now want to turn it off because what I now want to do is I want to look for screen two. Look for the blue one. So screen two visible. Drag it over here. And I could take this feature here, or I can find it again in logic drawer, but I can just copy paste, attach it here, and click it to be true. So I'm turning on screen two now. And this one, let's do the completed sound. So remember you can use any sound file for yours. Okay. And the last what I need to do is at the very end, you need to cycle it back to the menu screen. Otherwise, the program will run once and won't be able to run again. So I'm going to look for screen button 2. When clicked. So when screen button 2 is clicked, I'm going to take this, control C, control V, paste it over here. So when screen button 2 is clicked, I'm going to have screen button 2 turn off. Sorry about that. And then back to the menu button. So I'm going to have it loop all the way back to the very start. This way my app will continue to run. Okay, and I'm going to click this one. True. And let's put the goodbye sound. Play goodbye sound. So I have my three pieces. Now you, if you have more screens, you just keep doing this. Just remember at the very end you want to have the last thing setting your menu visible on again, which is true. So this way it will be back to the first button. So I have my first button. When I click on it, we go to my second screen, which is I call it screen one, and then I click on screen one, it goes to screen two, and I click on screen two, back to my menu. When I'm ready to see this, then what I do is I click new emulator. And do you guys notice this is a good point to me to point out? Do you guys notice that the, your block editor is in this Java screen, which is the, and that if you want to scroll back to Chrome, I can go back to Chrome, and right, we should be using Chrome for this. And I can continue to make edits here. So I can make an edit here, and it will then I can go back to my coffee Java screen, and it'll, I can make changes here. I can go back, and or you can minimize screen. And now I'm going to load my so the emulator. Let's click on, so I click that new emulator. Click OK. 
and the little Android is the Android screen. Okay, and I can actually minimize all these so that all three show up. Okay, so if I shrink it, you can have all three pages show up at the same time, and they all feed each other live. Okay, so if I want to have all three screens here, so I have my main menu, my block editor, and my emulator. Now, emulator takes a while to load, so oh, no, turn on the phone. Okay. And then when I've turned on the phone, now, so that, that that's when I click the new emulator. Now what I need to do is connect to device. And we connect to the emulator. When we connect this to a real phone, we're going to be using the Wi-Fi button. But for now, we're going to connect, connect to the virtual phone. And now this golden button means it's loading. And once again, this takes a while, too, depending on how big your app is it's going to take a while for it to download to your phone. So you've got to be patient. I'll turn green once it's ready. And it's ready. So now if I click play, And then on my next screen, if I click the next screen, it will go to the next screen. The mission has been completed. And I go to the next screen, it should go back to the menu. This conversation can serve no purpose anymore. Goodbye. And if I looped it, I should be able to continue the loop. And I'll start.